It seems oxymoronic to suggest that we need to learn how to behave. After all, we are all, right this minute, engaged in actions that constitute behavior. Yet, we have to learn how to breathe, which we do in meditation, how to run when we take up running, and how to grip when we learn how to box. Breathing, running, and making a tight fist with our hands are activities which we are designed to do virtually by instinct in order to survive. But such is the complexity of our behavior that the brain's autonomic system, the central nervous system that runs our involuntary responses, is never quite good enough if left alone. We can all learn how to improve what our body and brain can do by teaching ourselves specific techniques that help optimize how the body uses the energy that is available to it. We can then do more with the same effort, or continue to do what we do, but with less effort. All of which brings us back to our behavior. The pandemic showed us, quite conclusively, that when we are isolated from each other, our behavior suffers. You would think that becoming introverted would make us all quieter and perhaps even more docile. In fact, neuroscientific research shows that when we become more introspective, we lose some of the capability we had on coping with external distractions. These distractions then overwhelm our central nervous system with stimulation, which makes our body respond in an aggressive way as it feels to us like an assault on our senses. In plain English, introverts are more likely to become aggressive in a public gathering situation than extroverts who are much better at exercising the top-down control of their emotional states. Here's an irrefutable statement. If we knew how to behave exactly in every situation we encounter, we would always feel safe, calm, collected, and we would be able to achieve what we want. No one can do this, however, because behaving correctly in every situation is exceedingly difficult. For a start, we cannot predict every possible situation that we encounter. Then, even the ones we do predict have the knack to not go according to plan. The variables we encounter in our everyday life range from other people, each of whom has their own ideas, beliefs and motivation, to unexpected conditions presented by the specifics of each of the environments we find ourselves in. Yet, we are expected to be able to deal with this calmly, without losing control of our emotions. To help us do that, we have put in place institutions and belief systems that help guide our behavior. Organized religion and the church is one example. The law and the legal system and the police is another. Social conventions and socially accepted behavior is a third. All of this is designed to dampen down the emotional arousal that's created by uncertainty and enable us to control the fight or flight response we feel so that we can then engage the executive function of our brain that is involved in complex decision making and then behave in a way that is broadly acceptable. Those institutions I just mentioned act like guardrails. We may brush up against them as we navigate our way in the world, but we don't fall, even if we trip up. Things change when an additional external stressor is added to the mix, however. Something personal, like a death in the family, a divorce, a change of jobs, or something that impacts the outside world, like a war or a pandemic. These consume a lot of our available capacity to deal with the unexpected, and they add an additional layer of anxiety, which is caused by the inherent uncertainty they represent. What happens is that then, they derail our ability to behave correctly. In this pandemic, for example, we have witnessed inexplicable instances of outrage, air rage, civil disobedience and public unrest. 
these are externalizations of a much deeper personal struggle that takes place when we feel that the guidelines we rely on to know what is right from wrong in our behavior suddenly no longer apply. As a result, we end up feeling betrayed, unmoored, cast adrift in a sea which we are ill-equipped to navigate. Is there a way around this? I would suggest there is, though it is far from easy. Learning who we are in terms of what we want to do in our life, what we wish to achieve and how we want to be remembered, is a stabilizing anchor when all else fails. Exercising empathy, kindness and forgiveness means we deprive the external world from the ability to adversely affect our emotions at every step. Being kind to ourselves is a primary step of self-care. Self-care gives us value. We, in turn, give value to everything and everyone around us as a means of feeling better about ourselves and also feeling better about the immediate world we inhabit. There is a halo effect to such actions. What we end up doing when we have no guidelines to help us is the result of our expectations of the world and life, our perception of what we see, the reality we experience and the beliefs we hold. When we better understand who we are in those terms, we're in a better position to guide ourselves. Our thoughts, decisions and actions become more intentional. We become self-directed, self-motivated, self-guided. Our behavior then is intended to deliver the outcomes that will take us to our long-term goals. We have a sense of purpose. Purpose adds meaning to our life. And that truly changes everything.